Thank you, Nancy. Good morning. morning. Welcome to uh, Paradise United Methodist Church. I'm your pastor in Paradise, Rob Ernest. Good to have you here this morning. <clears throat> uh, we have a slightly larger crowd than normal today. You know I'm not preaching. <laughs> Wait a minute. There seems to be some kind of coincidence there. No preaching more people. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> we have a special presentation of our uh, cantata today, and um, um, we've worked long and hard on this. Well, not that hard. <laughs> we have a lot of fun uh, doing it, and uh, we hope that uh, it will be uh, um, something that will be memorable. I think it will, <laughs> I think it will be uh, in more ways than one, but uh, um, uh, that is coming up shortly. One or two... Um, especially for our folks online, um, and there is an insert. Believe it or not, we have an insert in your bulletin today. Um, but I wanted to present this to, especially for our folks online who don't have a, a bulletin, uh, about uh, some of the, a couple of um, special presentations that we have for you this morning. Um, you will note that uh, the new candle holders, candle lights, I should say, we've been using lately. Uh, back in the back, we have a couple more. We'll use these for our uh, lighting of the, of the candles. These are um, uh, in memory of and honor of uh, Rocky Castaldi. was a longtime member, and uh, that is written in your insert this morning of what, that, uh, what that's all about. When his grandchildren and other children were ready to participate, Rocky took great joy in teaching them, always being right there in case they needed some assistance in lighting the candles. And at the end of the service, they would take the candle, the lights, out of the sanctuary uh, so that we could take the uh, light in, out into the world to share God's love. Rocky passed away December 22nd, 2020, and as a memorial gift in his honor, we have new candle lighters and stand. That's what I was trying to get this left up here this morning for. <laughs> so, well, <laughs> so uh, we appreciate, uh, appreciate that. Also, uh, as a backdrop to our choir this morning, you will notice this beautiful uh, quilt um, was uh, gifted by uh, Nancy Riggs uh, uh, and actually Nancy's mother, uh, Margaret, for Nancy and her kids. Uh, and uh, a little, a little more background into that. Her name was Margaret Stumpf. Am I pronouncing that right, Nancy? Um, and um, her mother, uh, Margaret's mother, left Germany before World War II, and they immigrated here. Margaret uh, grew up in St. Joe, attended uh, all girls' school there. Nancy was unaware that she was an accomplished accordion player. Um, at, at that time. She was very active in the church, spent a lot of her time giving back to the church. She also served as a verger. I had no idea what a verger is. Anybody know what a verger was, is? A verger is a caretaker or a trustee, kind of like for the church. Um, and she felt that that was her calling. And she says, that Nancy says that she knows that Margaret is now smiling, knowing that this quilt is in a place that she felt at peace with. And um, we are happy to have that as a part of our uh, memories uh, this morning. So, so thank you for that. So a couple of items to be aware of as we continue with our, our worship service this morning. 
Um, we've got lots of guests here this morning. A couple of, I don't think they'll mind that I'm going to point them out. They snuck in at the end of, of uh, getting in this morning. A very old, old friend of mine, Bill and Nancy Oliver. Um, Bill uh, and Nancy, I think, have been to every church that we've been appointed to since our ministry. They follow us around everywhere. We can't get rid of them. Uh, they lived out in Texas. Uh, and uh, are up here uh, uh, today, and we didn't know you were coming, but we appreciate you, appreciate you uh, being here uh, today. Bill and I started working at a radio station in Texas on the same day in 1984, so he knows all the, where all the skeletons are buried. All right, let's uh, prepare our hearts and minds for worship this uh, uh, prayer this morning. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, you are an awesome God. We praise you for this day. We praise you for this space and this time and this, uh, this place where we can come together and worship you in song and in word and in deed. We ask, dear Lord, for the presence of your Holy Spirit to be within us and a part of us as we glorify you now and only you at this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we will uh, celebrate with our call to worship and the Advent candle lighting. I'm going to ask our choir to come up this morning and... Um, Words to the call to worship are on in your bulletin and on the screen. <clears throat> are you doing the honors, dear? Okay, let me get you some. Let me get you some. Would you join with me? People who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. The lights that we have kindled each week light the way to the coming Christ. The candles of hope, peace, and joy glow brilliantly. Today we light the candle of love. <coughs> The coming Lord is forever faithful. The never-ending affection and tenderness the Christ has for us is a gift that is unequal. Praising the God who cares so deeply for all creation, we light this candle. Together we will demonstrate... <coughs> Amen. We were supposed to go uh, in our seats, but I'm going to ask you to go back to your, your pews, and then we're going to come up, because we're going to sing a song first. If you would... Uh, turn in your United Methodist Hymnal to page 251. Go tell it on the mountain. And let's stand as we are able. <coughs>
ushers come forward this morning and invite you to join with us in the offertory prayer by the people. Giver of all good gifts, bless the offering I make this morning, a small token to all the blessing you have poured down. Into my human weakness, you gave the greatest gift of all, Emmanuel, your presence with us in Jesus the Christ. Not just a presence, but an invitation. Through him to be your child and an heir to your kingdom, may these gifts, hymns, prayers, and promises help me realize the kingdom in my heart and in our world. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. comes forward, you may be seated. Welcome. It's so good to see you, and we're glad that you're here. Come in. Make yourself at home, and join us by the fire. It's so good to be together again. Today, we'll reminisce. We'll share some special memories and make some new ones as we open our hearts. This will be a gathering to remember. The crackle of the fire, the sparkle of the lights, the glow of the candles, the beauty of this space. That special feeling, that sense of hope when we're together and those we hold dear. This can mean only one thing. Christmas is here. This is the season to celebrate our Savior's birth. It's time for families, by all definitions, to get together for churches to gather. It's time for all of us to come together 
and let God's love reign in our hearts. This is Christmas.
baby going through. When you hear a familiar Christmas carol, a part of you comes alive again. That childlike part of you that's full of hope, that part that still dreams and believes, that part of you is resurrected again. Not just because of the Christmas song, but because of what those songs represent. Hope, peace, love, and joy. So joy is redemptive, and it comes to us in different ways. Sometimes it's through the excitement of a child, watching them light up when they open a gift, the way they accept, get excited about the simplest of things like a Christmas cookie, or a new ornament for the tree, or other times it's through the love of a friend, or the kindness of a neighbor, or a co-worker. Sometimes we see it in nature, watching snow fall silently in the night and waking up to a landscape covered in white. It reminds me of newness, second chance, and forgiveness. Whatever way it comes to you, don't discount it. Pause and take a moment to reveal those reminders of our redemption.
What do you look forward to every Christmas? Is it the sparkle of the lights and ornaments on the tree, the warmth of the fire, or the people that you love? Maybe it's gathering around the fireplace, watching your favorite Christmas movies, listening to those classic Christmas songs, or just reminiscing about years past, even though some of those years weren't as bright as others. Most everyone has a special Christmas memory to cherish. This time of year, as we gather with family and friends, home is most where we want to be. On that first Christmas, the baby Jesus was far from his earthly and heavenly homes. He came to make his home in our hearts if we would welcome him in. Our tradition 
as a church is to retell the Christmas story. No matter how old we get or how many times we've heard the scriptures read, we never grow tired of it. This truly is the heart of Christmas. The time, it's true, the miracle of Jesus called our Savior. It's also unites us as a church family and our hearts are linked together as we tell the old, old story. What if a beautiful way to usher in the Christmas season. As we celebrate, the, 
As we celebrate the birth of Christ, remember that he came here for you and he came here for me. Imagine a father who saw our need and was willing to give us his only son. Imagine a son who willingly came to take our place. Greater love, no man to lay down his life for a friend. This precious baby boy whose birth we celebrate grew up to be a man who said, not my will, but yours be done. The one who loved us so much that he gave and stretched his arms and took our place on the cross. said, it is finished. This is the one we celebrate today, and his love is the greatest gift we could ever receive.
Part of our traditional Christmas is to exchange gifts this time of the year. And as we gather together with hearts open, ready to give and ready to receive, I can't help but think of the greatest gift that's ever been given. Christ gives us beauty for ashes. He gives us joy for our sorrow and a forgiveness for our sins, comfort for our pain, healing for our brokenness, and togetherness when we're alone. In exchange, he simply takes that we accept him, that we believe. This is indeed the greatest gift we could ever receive. Our prayer this Christmas is that all would come to know him and receive the love, the healing, and the forgiveness that only he can give.
On that night in Bethlehem, God's love came to earth in the form of his son, Jesus. He entered a world of sickness, a world of sorrow, and lost to being healing and restoration. He saw our need and he came for you and for me. And we celebrate his birth as we celebrate his birth. Let us celebrate of God's son. The king has come. Good job, good job. Marty, come out here. Come here. Here's the guy that pushes all the buttons and, and turns all the knobs. Marty is our fantastic techie AV. <clears throat> good job. <laughs> and Nancy. Good job. 
Yeah. Thank you all. You, you may be see, seated. We still have about a minute left for a sermon. <laughs> no? Okay. <clears throat> but uh, thank you all for, uh, for coming. This is, by the way, the Sunday of Love. If you didn't know it, this last Sunday in uh, uh, Advent, next uh, uh, Christmas Eve, we'll light the Christ candle. Um, and we invite you here for that on, uh, on Christmas Eve. And then, um, unusual, we have a Christmas Day service, too, on Sunday, falls on Sunday this year. Uh, we're doing a little study in, in fact, in fact, we just finished this up in our Sunday School class today. It's called The Heart That Grew Three Sizes, Finding Faith in the Story of the Grinch. And we finished that up today. It's by Matt Rawl. And it, it kind of sums up what uh, today is all about, what our Advent season is all about. I'd like to read a little bit uh, for it from you. Uh, 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 Christmas is abundant. Christmas is our human cup running over with divine favor and grace. Christmas is more than denominational lines. Christmas is more than our petty divisions and Twitter squabbles. Christmas is more than our traditions, hymns, candles, and wreaths. Take everything away. And Jesus was born anyway and continues to be born within us through God's grace every day. Love truly did come down at Christmas. Psalm 136 reads as if we are hearing God's heartbeat. It says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his steadfast love endures forever. That's what this day is all about, this Sunday of love. Thank you for being with us today for, for this special day. Would you stand for our benediction? <laughs> <coughs> uh, oh, we have a hymn. <laughs> Forgot about that. Okay, let's sing a song. <laughs> Receive this benediction. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now until we meet again. Amen. Amen. Go Chiefs. Yeah.